This is the second video in a three-part interactive instructional video series I put together to help people answer the questions, what can I run on my portable power station and how long can I run it? Now, if you haven't seen video one, please go to the description below and find the link for video one and start there because this series is meant to be seen in order. Now, in video one, we learned about the inverter and how watts measure rates of power at any given moment of time and how that relates to appliances. In this video, we'll be learning about battery capacity and how watt hours measure the amount of energy over a period of time and how that relates to appliances. The first thing I want to talk about is battery capacity. Now, I've had people ask me in the past, so what does a battery have in it, watt hours or watts? And I just tell them it, a battery stores energy, it doesn't demand anything, energy enters the battery over time, and energy is withdrawn from the battery over time, it's watt hours. Now, um, a battery capacity refers to the amount of watt hours a battery is capable of storing. In the case of my Delta 1300, it's 1260 watt hours. In my little river here, it's 288 watt hours. Now, later in the video, you'll be finding out how to figure out how many watt hours your appliances are going to be taking out of your battery. Now, if you had a thousand watt hour battery and it's full, then it's easy to calculate. Because if, if, you, if you have an appliance that's going to take 500 watt hours over time, you have 500 watt hours left. But what happens if it's a 60% state of charge? That's when it's different. You need to convert the 60% to watt hours. And all you do is you multiply 0.60 times the capacity. In this case, for example, uh, this will be 74%. Point 0.74 times... 288, I have 213.12 watt hours available. That's as simple as that. It's like a, a car with a 20 gallon gas tank. If it's full and you know how many miles per gallon, you know how far you can go with it. If it's 75% full, you need to convert that 75% to gallons. So you multiply 0.75 by the capacity, it's 15 gallons. Now you know how to do it. The same thing with the battery. All right, so this LPPP is you have a 1500 watt hour battery, 63% state of charge. How many watt hours do you have left? The answer is 945 watt hours left in the battery, but you can't use all of that. Now, some of you are saying, what do you mean I can't use all of that? <laughs> what do you mean here? Uh, what, what I'm saying is the inverter is going to have to use some of that battery power to run itself to convert DC to AC current. That's called inverter efficiency. And so, so the question is, how much can you use? That's, that's what you want to know. What percentage of the battery can I use? And from my experience, it seems as though um, it's going to be between 75 and 95% of the battery. Now to find out the efficiency of yours, just, just go to Google or, or YouTube and type in your particular unit. And then next to that type a, a battery capacity test or inverter uh, uh, efficiency and see if you can find if someone's already tested yours and if you can't then you might want to just test your own I have a video here that shows you how to do that just be sure that the battery uh, can be drawn down to zero you know all the way down to zero uh, as state of charge uh, contact the manufacturer or something because you can damage the battery if, it, if it's not uh, capable of doing that uh, if I didn't know the percentage of the efficiency of mine I would, uh, I would use 85%. So you can pick what you want um, for the meantime until you can find out, but that's what I would use, 85%. So what do you do with, with the 85%? How do, you, what, how, do you, how do you calculate that? Uh, you do the same thing you did for the state of charge. Just multiply, if we're assuming 85% efficient, uh, and a thousand watt hour battery bank, for example, you just multiply 0.85 times the thousand watt hours and you have 850 watt hours. That's, that's all there is to it. That's the efficiency. That's how much you get to use. Um, and so that's, it, it isn't a big difference, but, uh, but when you're trying to manage power for a week while it's raining, you can't put panels out, you want to ration it, every little bit can help. Um, so I have another LPPP for you. You have a 1500 watt hour battery, 85% efficient, 100% stated charge, how many watt hours is available for you to use? The answer is 1,275 watt hours. 
Now I'm going to throw something at you here that's going to make it a little bit more complicated, but it really isn't. What if you have a 1,000 watt hour battery bank? It's 85% efficient, but you have 75% state of charge. Now what do you do? Well, just do the efficiency first. So 1,000 watt hours times 0.85 is 850 watt hours. Now multiply the 75% or 0.75 times the available watt hours of 850. That leaves 637 watt hours. Your next LPPP, just figure one out for yourself here. You have a 1500 watt hour battery, 85% efficient, 60% state of charge. How many watt hours do you have available to use? So your battery is 1500 watt hours times the inverter efficiency, which is 85%, so 0.85, okay, and that is 1,275 watt hours. Now it's at 60% state of charge, so you multiply that times 0.60. So you have 765 watt hours available to use. Uh, say so next, I'm going to be talking about watt hours. I know you're saying watt. I thought we were talking about watt hours. <laughs> no. Um, a little more detail about watt hours. All right, now let's circle back to that, that lamp with the 100 watt bulb. Um, a lot of people use that example because it's, it's just simple and easy to understand. If you're running 100 watts or 100 watt constant, it's not turning off and on, it's just solid, uh, it's not fluctuating, it's going to take 100 watt hours out of your battery bank in an hour. It'll take 50 watt hours out in a half hour and 25 watt hours in 15 minutes, evenly over an hour. All right, now, if you had that lamp, you turn it on for 15 minutes, off for 15 minutes, on for 15 minutes, and back off for 15 minutes, during that hour, how many watt hours did it use? Well, it, it used 50 watt hours because it, you had it on for 30 minutes during that hour. Now, I have another LPPP question for you. You're going to do an experiment now with that lamp, 100 watt bulb, for two hours. On for 15 minutes, off for 15 minutes. On 15 minutes, off 15 minutes. That's the first hour. Second hour, on 15 minutes, off for 45. How many watt hours did it use? 75 watt hours. And how many watt hours per hour on average did it use? You just divide it, the, the uh, 75 by two hours. So it's 37.5 watt hours per hour. Now that's kind of how a refrigerator works. It, it will run fairly constant running watts and then will shut off and on. But the difference is you don't know when it's shutting off and on. You can't calculate it. And that's when the kilowatt meter comes into play or another uh, meter similar to that. All right, so you, you, plug the kilo, you plug your refrigerator into the kilowatt meter. And if you ran, by the way, if, if that refrigerator ran 250 watts constant, without off and on or fluctuating, how many watt hours would it take in two hours? It'd be 500 watt hours, it'd be like a light bulb, it'd be 250 one hour, 250 the next hour. But it doesn't work like that. All right, so you plug the kilowatt meter in, uh, your refrigerator in the kilowatt meter, and you run it for eight hours. It turns out it used, because it'll add it up, the kilowatt meter will add up the time and the, the kilowatt hours. You, it turns out it used 0.8 kilowatt hours. Multiply that by a thousand, and then you get 800 watt hours. That's what you have to do with the kilowatt meter. You have to multiply the number by 1,000 to get watt hours. So 0 0.8 times 1,000, 800 watt hours. Divide that by how many hours you ran it, which is eight, meaning it uses 100 watt hours per hour on average. That's, that's it. So now you know if the power goes out and you have to run it for five hours, it's gonna take 500 watt hours out of your battery bank. So now I have a scenario for you. You have a neighbor who has a thousand watt hour battery and the power is going to go out. And she, uh, she knows how to calculate the state of charge. It's 75% state of charge right now. It's, it caught her off guard. She didn't get a chance to fill it up. Um, so she, she knows that she has 750 watt hours available, but she's not, she's not calculating efficiency in this. And it turns out, What's going to happen is, is, is she has a 750 watt hours minus 500 with the refrigerator. She thinks she's going to have 250 watt hours left to use, or she might try to use the 250 while she's running the refrigerator because she's anticipating having that extra. 
Now, you're, you're the neighbor and you have the same 1,000 watt hour battery. You have 75% uh, state of charge, but you're calculating the efficiency of 85% and subtracting 500 watt hours. So how many watt hours do you end up with at the, uh, at the end of the pow five hour power outage? Okay, you end up with 137.5 watt hours. She thinks she has 250 to use. And if she tried using it during that five hour period with something else, she'd, come, she'd be short with, with, uh, with watt hours. Now, you know, it's not, a, it's not a big amount, a large amount, but 112.5 watt hours. But every bit helps. Uh, like I said, especially if you're trying to deal with a long-term outage and you need to ration power. All right, I'm going to go around to my appliances that I, 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 I checked out in the first video using uh, my same worksheets. Please get the worksheets out that you had from the first video and, uh, and work with me on this if, if you can. Uh, I'm going to be looking for three things. I'm looking for how many watt hours per hour on average some of uh, my appliances use, especially the refrigerator. I'll, I'll check surge watts as well. Uh, I want to find out how many watt hours per minute some appliances use, like a microwave. And then finally, how many watt hours within a cycle, like a coffee maker, uh, uses. I just plugged in my 65 inch Samsung TV to my kilowatt meter. I want to find out how many watt hours per hour on average it uses. Right now it's drawing about 164 watts. What I'm going to do later is work with this button here, kilowatt hour and hour button. If I push kilowatt hour, it shows how many kilowatt hours it used. Push it again, it'll show me how many hours and minutes. So, so far it's been one minute. And then that's how many watts. All right, so I'll check back in a little while. Okay, so I'm finishing up with my Samsung TV. It's only been running for about three hours. Uh, my kilowatt meter will tell me exactly uh, how long I ran it. But uh, it, would, it would be better if I ran it all day, a little more accurate but I need to move along with my other appliances for this video. So um, let's get some numbers. Let's find out what's, what it did in these three hours. All right, the running watts right now, they, they're kind of irrelevant. You want to go to this purple button, kilowatt hours. So it used 0 0.50 kilowatt hours. And when you multiply that by 1,000, it's just add, a, just add a zero. It's 500 watt hours divided by three hours. So um, let's go ahead and uh, write this information down in the worksheet. Now what you want to do is just write down 0 0.50 kilowatt hours times 1,000 equals 500 watt hours. Then write 500 watt hours right here. And then the length of time that the kilowatt meter uh, was taking the reading, and that was three hours. Then divide 500 divided by three is 166.6 watt hours per hour on average. Now in a power outage, I doubt that I'm going to want to watch a 65 inch TV for an hour or more. So what, what uh, I think is important to do is find out how many watt hours per minute does this TV use. So I use the rated watts, 255 rated watts divided by 60 is 4.25 watt hours per minute. So if I ran my TV for 10 minutes, that would be 42.5 watt hours out of my battery bank. All right, on to my computer. Now I'm using the same setup I did in video one with my computer, my monitor, my speakers, my printer. Uh, I have it all running on a power strip and then extension cord over here. I wanna find out how many watt hours per hour on average my setup uses. Okay, right now it's running 140 watts, but that's that's kind of uh, pointless right now for what we're doing. We want to know how many kilowatt hours it's going to use in how many hours. So it's been four minutes since I plugged it in. All right, so I'll check back uh, a little later. Let's check in on the kilowatt meter, find out what the numbers look like. Okay, 0 0.20 kilowatt hours, which um, uh, if you multiply it by 1,000, that's 200 watt hours in about an hour and a half. All right, so I'll check back in. Uh, I'll probably in about three hours and um, and finish up with this. Okay, I'm finished taking recordings off my kilowatt meter. Looks like uh, 0 0.56 kilowatt hours, which is 560 watt hours. And uh, just call it four hours. Okay, so now I'm going to record the numbers on my worksheet. 
Now my goal is to find out how many watt hours per hour on average my computer uses. We found out that it used 0.56 kilowatt hours. So you multiply that by a thousand, you get 560 watt hours. Write 560 here. How long you ran it with a kilowatt meter. Take 560 divided by four gives you 140 watt hours per hour on average. Now in a, in a power outage, you, you may not want to run it for an hour or more. So it would be nice to break it down to minutes. Now, I, I always like to use um, the rated watts, and in this case, we don't have it, so use the, uh, the maximum running watts. You just take that and divide, divide it by 60, and it gives you 3.64 uh, watt hours per minute. So if you had to use the computer, say, for um, 15 minutes, you would use 54.6 watt hours. Now, I doubt you'll use that much because we're using a VA number that's pretty high estimate, but it just, it's, it's good for planning. All right, so let's take a look at my uh, electric blanket. So uh, let's take a look at uh, the setup here. It's like it's using about 109 watts right now. Kilowatt hours, zero two minutes. So I'll check back in about an hour to find out how the numbers look. All right, I think we're good to go here. These are the watts currently running. Kilowatt hours, 0.15 means it's uh, 150 watt hours in two hours. My electric blanket used 0.15 kilowatt hours times 1000 is 150 watt hours. Right, 150 watt hours here. I ran the meter for two hours, 150 divided by two, 75 watt hours per hour on average. Now I also took the rated 180 watts, divided it by 60 minutes to uh, find out how many watt hours per minute it uses. Okay, now we're going to take a look at my the, the numbers for my lamp or 100 watt bulb. Okay, so the lamp with a 100 watt bulb is, is really simple to figure out. You don't have to do any calculations here to find out the estimated watt hours it uses per hour on average. Um, in, this, in this case, it's, it's 100 watt hours per hour on average. But it's nice to know how many watt hours per minute it uses because you might, um, you might want to use it for 10 minutes, for example. So you divide the maximum rated running watts by 60 minutes and you get 1.6 watt hours per minute. And that would, if you want to run it for 10 minutes, that would mean uh, you would use 16 watt hours out of your battery bank. All right, just as it was with the, the 100 watt bulb, the microwave is, is really simple to work with. Uh, the rating is 1530 watts. So I'm not going to run it for an hour, so I don't care about hour here. I want to know, though, how many watt hours per minute will it use? Just divide. 1530 divided by 60, you get 25.5 watt hours for my microwave. And if I want to run it for 10 minutes, then I know that it's going to use 255 watt hours out of my battery bank. So for the toaster, what you want to do is break it down into um, watt hours per minute. And it's 920 watt rating divided by 60 is 15.3 watt hours. So um, it takes two minutes to uh, toast some bread for me. And that would be uh, 30.6 watt hours right out of my battery bank. My coffee maker is a whole different uh, situation. Um, it has a start and a finish. It's, a, it's on a cycle. So um, I'm not interested in how many watt hours per minute or watt hours per hour on average. Uh, I just want to know how many watt hours it's going to take out of my battery bank uh, after it's made my pot of coffee. <laughs> so I'm um, just going to turn it on. It's all plugged in right here. And there we go. So when it's finished, uh, I'll come back and we'll just find out how many watt hours it used. Okay, it's finished, 0.15. So it used 150 watt hours to make a pot of coffee. Um, okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and write that into the worksheet. Well, that's pretty simple to figure out. Um, use 150 watt hours in a cycle to make coffee. Okay, so I'm ready to take some readings on my refrigerator. Now we've only owned this refrigerator for a few weeks. Never did any readings on it before, it's the first time. It's unplugged from the utility power, and I have it plugged into an extension cord right now. And I'm ready to plug it into this line splitter. Now what I plan to do here is find out the maximum running watts. 
I want to find out how many watt hours per hour on average it uses. With the line splitter and the clamp meter, I, uh, I want to find out the peak amps. So I can multiply that with the volts to find out the surge watts and startup watts. Okay, so let's get started. It's been running for about 20 minutes now and um, looks like about 50, 52 watts. And the amps peaked at 3.44 when I first started it up. So um, I'm going to reset this so we can find out what surge watts happen throughout the, uh, the course of this test. All right, so I'm going to reset this now. Shut it off. I changed the batteries also because I'm going to run it for quite a while. Hit the max. And then uh, put it back on the line splitter. Okay, I'm just checking in with my numbers here and I noticed that it is um, running 383 watts. 383 VA. That means it's likely defrosting right now. Uh, the number is the same because it's a, a resistive load. It's producing heat only. And that's um, defrosting. So it doesn't really matter the reason why. It's just the, the point is that's the highest running watts that I've seen. So when it's done doing this, I'm going to go ahead and uh, unplug everything. The amps are the same from, as they were from yesterday. Well, I've ran my refrigerator on this kilowatt meter for over 24 hours, so I'm ready to, uh, to record some numbers on my worksheet. It's uh, running 10.2 10, 10 watts right now, but the numbers I need are over here. It used 2.13 kilowatt hours. in 25 hours, 13 minutes. The highest amps used 3.58. So I'm going to multiply that with uh, 120, I'm gonna get 429. 429 VA, I'm going to use that as the maximum running watts. Okay, so let's get this on paper. Now the only listed rated watts I saw on this refrigerator was 355 and that was for the defrosting input. I did see three amps, so I multiplied that by 120 and came up with 360 VA, which is just a little higher, so that's the number I, I'm using for the rated watts. The estimated maximum running watts I saw on the kilowatt meter was 383. Now, the estimated maximum surge or peak watts, there are no surge watts with this, this compressor. This is a, they call it a linear compressor, so there is no surge, surge watts. The highest I, I saw on my clamp meter was a 3.58 amps multiplied by volts. I get 429.6 uh, VA. So um, I just rounded it to 430. Now I'm, I'm thinking this is probably um, what, what, I, what the kilowatt meter did not catch or the start of the um, defrosting cycle could be this. In any case, I'm going to use the um, 430 and for uh, any calculations for my summary sheet, I'll, I'll probably put this to four, 450. Now, it uses 84.3 watt hours per hour on average because it used 2.13 kilowatt hours times 1,000 is 2,130 watt hours. And you divide 2130 by 25.25, uh, you end up with 84.3. Now, that kind of, of, of situation here is an ideal full-size refrigerator for a uh, to run on a, um, a portable power station in an emergency. Uh, my little um, my little EcoFlow uh, R600 Pro, uh, or the kind that you at least you can buy retail, has a battery capacity of 720 watt hours. You could run this refrigerator on that uh, for eight, about eight and a half hours, and not worry about surge watts either, uh, reaching the limit at all. So this is a really good refrigerator for that. Now, if you're going to attempt uh, taking readings on your own refrigerator, be sure you take, uh, take your time, at least 24 hours, maybe 48 or longer. The longer, the better. And uh, when I say 24 hours, I mean in, in the day, you're watching every hour, several times an hour for eight to 10 hours. You wanna know that you've seen the maximum running watts. 
push the button for the VA. That's the number you want to use. Or have uh, maybe your family help out. They can check out the, and make notes you know, every hour for you. But you, you need to find that out. Uh, the, uh, your, your clamp meter is going to pick up the, the peak amps but, and, and it'll catch the uh, maximum running watts you know, by, by multiplying that volts. But that's going to be overwritten by surge watts. So you have to observe the uh, running watts. And this one, my refrigerator didn't have surge watts, so it's fairly easy to do. Uh, the one I had before that, this black GE refrigerator I had, had 1,200 surge watts, so it was easy. You know, two also, we did 254 running and 1,200 uh, surge watts, so it's, it's pretty simple. Running watts can also exceed rated watts. Remember that as well. You saw an example of that with my refrigerator. They can exceed it. Uh, in fact, they can exceed the VA number from your refrigerator, the amps times volts. Running max running watts can actually see that as well at times. I made a summary sheet for you in case you're interested. Download it from the description below. You can just summarize all the worksheets on it. It makes it easier to read. And that way you put it all with your portable power station and have it ready to go if, a power, uh, if power goes out. Um, I have a test you can download also under the description below for, for a video, I was going to say chapter, video one and two. And uh, see if you can pass it. If you can, then you've gotten all the information you need from these two videos. If you can't, then you probably should go back and find out where, what, what you missed. Um, so with that being said, let's move to uh, video three, uh, solar panels and how to manage your power based on videos one and two.